Hello everyone, this is the second lesson on case number one, the small breast. Let's talk about the Melo projection. We are dealing with the standard case, in which the medial and lateral quadrants are of the same size. The reasons why mammography of small breast is difficult are those already indicated for the CC projection. I would add that particularly in the Miller projection, the difficulty in getting the patient to relax becomes important, and thus, faults can be formed in the deep tissues, almost all at the upper level. Sometimes these faults have a huge impact on the quality of the images. The first error I would address, however, is this, the difficulty in general of showing the deep planes, and in this case, we are undoubtedly talking about the central and lower tissue, as you can see here, to which is added the absence of the IMF. But how do you, do you get more of these tissues? The advice is to position the patient at 45-50 degrees to the detector and then turn the patient towards the detector until the median sagittal plane where the navel is is parallel to the detector. This must be followed by the up and out maneuver, which brings the medial quadrants upwards. Your quadrants naturally lowered by gravity, and so you rebalance them with the lateral ones. Forward, so as to stretch the breast as much as possible, thus bringing the deep and medial planes onto the detector. As smooth breasts are usually resistant to stretching, these movements for them to be effective are to be made firmly. Remember that sometimes in the very most breast the IMF is not there, or is barely noticeable. Examples in figure 1 and 2 magnified to the right. This is the so called uh, nail IMF, where the passage of the breast over the chest must be at least perceptible. In figure 3, another example. Always on the deep tissues, one often notices in women with small breasts and a very slender thorax, both an incorrect documentation of the pectoralis muscle and the presence of folds in the upper part. It can be a concave shaped muscle, as in one. It could essentially be due to stiffening of the patient at arm shoulder level. But I tell you, in this specific case, it was an up and out maneuver that was not properly performed. It can be as in figure 2 and 3, a muscle that is too short. I will show you the correction in a moment. I would like first to emphasize this fact. Sometimes the incorrect shape and width of the pectoralis muscle does not result from the radiographer's performance, but from the patient joint pathology, often re revealed by folds in the axillary area. The folds are, can be of various types, which is why I would advise you to have a look at the series of about artifacts, which you can find on this channel. Uh, usually, one like this is not affected in the reading. Others, like these, instead, are 3G folds. They can hide tissue inside them, which is therefore subtracted from reading. Also in figure 4, the fold is uh, 3D, although less impacting. However, given the thickness, it should not be accepted. Let's move on to correction. To have more deep upper tissues, including when possible the latissimus dorsi at axillary level, and at the same time, minimize if not eliminate folds here. What shall I do? The detector height has to be right 
I would advise you to have a look at the videos on the documentation of the pituitary muscle and the one on the correction artifacts in the upper tissues in this regard. Here a summary, starting with the passion media to the detector, hold her firmly at the front of the axilla, drive her forward on the detector without making her turn or bow, thus bringing all the deep lateral tissues on the detector. We then move on to the two rotations maneuver, which you are familiar with if you watched other videos on this channel. The first consists of lifting the patient and supinating her hand, bringing her arm well forward. The second is a rotation directed superiorly and posteriorly, and again, bringing her arm well forward, elbow flexed and hand relaxed. Once the arm and shoulder are dealt with, the patient is turned laterally and the up and out maneuver is properly implemented. All of these uh, steps bring the medial deep tissues under the taxa, including greater length of the pectoralis muscle. It is also possible to see folds in the central deep tissues in small breasts. For example, pleated skin folds extending into the retromary space in 1 and 2. They are very disturbing on the reading. Before I indicate the correction, I show you these folds in the AMF, this one and this one, which, as you can see, have little influence on the reading. Interesting instead is the artifact from the opposite hemithorax uh, in a thin patient with the protruding ribs. Indeed, this is an important point to consider for patients with small breasts and a very slender thorax. We use our hands to protect the patient as much as possible from the passage of the compression paddle. Light field on to check nothing is projecting on the fob on her breast, and we try to limit as much as possible the discomfort of the exam. This is why sitting when performing the oblique projection is useful, not only to limit mammographers MSD. You have both hands available and a better view of the error to be studied. About leaning on the detector, since it's not possible to do otherwise, and we have also to compress the breast, we must necessarily resort to our ability to communicate effectively with the patient to increase her compliance. Let's talk about the correction force in central deep tissues. Before turning the patient, check uh, that the breast is not stuck behind by lifting it and passing a hand behind to feel uh, that there are no step there. It's also essential to smooth out the tissue from behind very carefully so as not to lose tissue which must be shown. As far as the correction of the folds in the IMF is concerned, as they are usually not very important in this type of breast, I will defer to a detailed description for when I deal with the very large breasts. The last position in error that often presents itself in a small breast is the nipple not in profile. It means that the first acquisition geometry parameter has not been met. And how to correct it? One must remember this dog dogma. The nipple points towards the missing tissue. So, does it point medially, that is to say, towards us? If the rotation is only a few degrees, do not correct. The bean is divergent and corrects it for us. If the rotation is more important, it is necessary to ask a patient to turn her hips and feet even more laterally, so as to reach and thus document the deep medial tissues. If the nipple points laterally towards the sector, it means that deep lateral tissue is missing. 
Here it is necessary to reposition the patient by going to recover those tissues. And the creation to be made is this, as indicated by Professor Tabasco. Push the lateral tissue towards your hand, then gather the wool breast. So, about uh, case one, in which we note the right nipple not in profile, the pectoralis muscle not long enough on the left side, and a major fault on the right side. Well, to correct all of these, I follow the suggestions I listed above, and the result is in images two. Alright, the video is finished. I hope you find these tips useful. I look forward to seeing you all at the next uh, one. Bye. Ciao.